wanted to do a video of how to take apart a 350. This one happens to be one that my dad was using. It has a highway 45 millimeter uh, piston and cylinder kit on it. And uh, it was new last year, at least the, the piston and cylinder kit was new. So, um, check the compression, it's about 145 pounds. What I'm going to do is I'm going to dismantle this. And it's only probably seen about a quart of wood, so not very much, but um, I want to see what I can do to improve the uh, the whole piston and cylinder thing. So, you know, maybe a little bit of port work, check the timing numbers on the highway kit. That way we can see exactly where it's at. I don't know if uh, anybody's actually posted timing numbers on Arborist sites, at least for the highway kit, so we'll do it here. Uh, I wanted to show that uh, we can essentially get these apart pretty darn quick, so we'll see how fast uh, I can get this apart. So uh, first thing I'm going to do, I'm actually going to remove the top cover. So I like using power tools, so definitely use power tools pretty much everywhere you can. chain and what you want to do here is make sure that you loosen this a little bit before you take this fully off And you need a box to put all this stuff in. So I've got a box to put all this stuff in. What I like to do with the metal pieces, put them on a magnetic tray. It's very helpful. That comes off. You can clean the parts, of course, and whatnot when it's out. I think it's easiest, rather than messing around with these things is literally just if you're gonna do pretty much anything on them take it all apart it doesn't take that long it's a little annoying to get those but okay. so now that I've got it down to that now it's actually easier to maneuver so now I can actually drain the gas just do that real quick. All right, gas is drained. The beauty of this whole thing is you can actually remove the muffler, the cylinder, and the whole carburetor. Uh, basically at the same time, but I'm not going to do that because I want to check timing numbers. So uh, let's take the rest of this off and see where we end up with that. I have these long Allens which work brilliantly for this type of work. They fit right on my Bosch tool here and I really like these. Three, four, and five. Again on the magnetic tray. And what you don't want to do is you don't want to lose this little piece here on the handle. Um, so even though it's not magnetic, I still stick that in the magnetic tray. 
So now we take off the chain brake handle. One screw there. Because these screws are very kind of specialty type, so this one's for the chain brake handle. This one's for the uh, the top handle. So obviously they're different, so it's really hard to mess them up. <clears throat> now, when the chain brake handle comes off, another thing that I imagine people are famous for losing is this uh, piece, which is the spring. So you, you get the chain brake handle back on, everything's great, and uh, no springiness to it. Well, it's because you're missing. So we're going to remove the spring just with my thumb, uh, my, my forefinger, press back this way a little bit and let it off nice and slow again on the magnetic tray. A number of places you can just keep going here but let's see what's next. How about the spark plug? Let's get rid of that because we don't want to have any issue here. This was already loose. The so spark plug comes out. It's a tad fouled so we want to clean that later. Air filter off. I'm going to put that down here, the box. Starter cover next. Don't force anything. You can crack a piece of plastic and then end up spending 30 or 40 bucks on the part. Let's take the muffler off. A uh, torque wrench, but. Okay. Again, power tools wherever you can. These are all, so far, these are all 4 millimeter Allens. This exhaust is actually a little rusty, so I may clean this up later with a little bit of uh, you know, a wire wheel and then hit it with some oven paint. One thing I like to do to the exhaust is open them up a little bit. I forget whether I've done that to this one or not. But you can actually go in through here, through the top of the exhaust, with a, a carbide grinder and just open that up. And that way, instead of muffler modding it like a lot of guys do, they go out the side or something like that, um, that way you actually retain the spark arrestor. That way you don't have any trouble. Uh, other little pieces. The, uh, the gasket, the exhaust gasket, gets broken really easily, so you do need to be careful about that. The nice thing about um, this saw, too, is that we got this deflector, and you can actually use the deflector as a guide when you're porting. You can actually look in here and get an idea that the uh, where the exhaust gasket is and where the actual uh, port diameter is are you know two millimeters off so just from the exhaust gasket to the initial port diameter I, I've got a lot of play there that I can grind away and make sure that there's uh, free flow <clears throat> I need to take off the carburetor, but in order to really get to that, it's best to take the rear handle off first. So I'm going to take the rear, rear handle off. Next is the throttle linkage. So there's a tiny spring here, which you let go, and then actuate the throttle to full throttle and pull the linkage back and out and then you actually pull the linkage then forward. Now this black plastic piece here should just lift up. And this side, it doesn't want to come out. So you know what? I'm not even going to remove it. I'm going to leave it there because you can just put that off to the side. Uh, this happens to be, I think, one of the Walbro carburetors. Um, 
they do have some issues, I know that. This one seems to be okay so far. Remove the fuel line. Uh, Got to get the saw, got to get the carburetor out of this, out of the anti-vibe, so out of the rubber mounts. So I am able to pull the rubber mount off here. <clears throat> and so now the carburetor is free. The shut off gets pulled out and the top wire as well pulled off so those go off to the side then essentially it should be ready to be released so let me get a screwdriver in there <coughs> the metal clamps are, are definitely a bugger to undo right in there right here so hopefully I can get a screwdriver in there or something and pop that the, the thing with a metal clamp is that it actually holds considerably better than the stock clamps. So if you happen to have a saw with a stock clamp, you have to do this. You don't have any choice. Take it apart, just take it apart like this and put a metal clamp uh, on there. And there are kits that are available online anywhere from eight to $14 or something like that. It's not expensive. And the issue is with the plastic clamp, it basically becomes deformed over time and doesn't hold really well and then you get an air leak at your intake and the air leak makes the saw run lean and if the saw runs lean then you destroy the piston and cylinder. So um, that's what happens to most of these saws. I mean over time if you have a saw that's 10 years old odds are it's got an air leak and it's probably run lean so you do need to check that. Let's see if I can get this off somehow. Yep, I just jammed jam the flathead in there, pop, okay, so that comes out. So now, hopefully I can gently work this. I don't know if I can pull this whole assembly out at the same time. I might be able but if I can't, then I'll pull the carburetor out separately. Yeah, let's pull the carburetor out separately. Okay. So there's actually two four millimeter Allens again in here. Make sure the saw, make sure the, make sure the Bosch tool is in reverse because you do not want to over tighten these. carb assembly. You definitely, definitely, definitely do not want to get anything uh, in the gas line, so this has to go over in a separate spot. So it's this baffle here that essentially needs to get changed if you're doing um, if you're doing these 350s. I usually just seat the whole thing as one piece, so I, I may not actually be able to get it, but I can see in the intake, which is good, so if I can see in the intake, then I actually can get timing numbers. So let's see at this point if we can let's take the wires off. The wires tend to get in the way. What are you doing here? And the ignition coil, pull that back, here's the plastic shroud, don't lose this, don't break that. And another thing that gets in the way is this plastic piece here. Again, make sure your tool is on reverse. This plastic air deflector um, can get busted e easily, especially this little nub out the top. So you do want to be careful about that. Actually, I'm going to that up here specifically too. <clears throat> also, it's a very popular piece to forget when you're putting this whole thing back together. Let's take the clutch off. So in order to remove the clutch, uh, I've got a way that I do it. There's definitely some other ways that you can do this. So 
So there is a tool for this. There's a very specific tool for this, but I don't have it. And I've done quite a few clutches without that tool. <clears throat> Just cause I don't have it. You work with what you got. So I usually use a really big wrench like that, get it on there. Take a piece of rope and stuff it where the spark plug goes. Stuff the whole chamber here. So now you've got this so it doesn't want to move. And there is a arrow on the clutch. Off is this way. So then you get a pipe wrench and go up. There it is. Now, <clears throat> crude way to do it? Oh, yeah. But it works. I haven't really busted anything yet. What, you, what does happen, and you do want to be careful of this in my other videos is the springs need to be popped back into the clutch and this one came out here so I'm gonna need to do my usual trick on that so I won't worry about that right now later this one uh, this particular part is actually rim drive we've converted this saw to rim drive here is the oil worm gear. All these pieces get inspected. The worm gears tend to get stripped. Not really on, on the face part here. They don't get stripped there. They get stripped the actual gear, so this is fine. And remove. something else to clean. And we've got the oiler on there. Don't know if I really need to remove that at this point. So now the nylon rope comes out. Let's check squish and timing numbers. We'll do that. We'll do that now and see where we end up there. I gotta get the uh, the flywheel off. If you have an impact, I can just hold that with the impact. So get yourself an impact if you don't have one. And you know what, let's leave the fly flywheel on just for this quick second because I want to check squish and it'll actually be easiest if I can rotate it back and forth with the flywheel. You need to have solder if you're checking squish. And you need a micrometer. Now if squish is big then you need a big piece of solder, or rather a big diameter piece. And if squish is small then a smaller diameter piece. You happen to have both. Now I'm gonna, I'm pretty sure this is a stock saw. In other words, the gasket uh, is still there, so they had not a gasket delete. And I don't think I messed with the base adapter at all. Uh, the base adapter being this part, so I don't think we messed around with that at all. So there's the base adapter. So what you can do with this is actually cut down a little bit off the top and that way you can do a quote-unquote gasket delete without actually deleting the gasket. All right, anyway, uh, let's start to finish here. So I'm checking squish. This is my thin solder. This actually is really nice stuff. This is WDBT um, silver solder. This is what we use in electronics. And uh, this is actually quite pricey stuff, but it doesn't have to be. It just happens to be what I have. Put it in towards the front here. So the solder retains its original shape. So let's get a bigger piece of solder. Let's see where that ends us up. Now this is good old-fashioned lead solder, which I don't really have any particular use for other than what we're doing here. Need a 
light. It really isn't flattening it hardly at all. Which means the uh, the squish on this is definitely not optimized. Hmm. I'm placing it over by the sidewall. As far as I can, you push it that way. So that's an awful lot of squish. So this really hasn't even been compressed at all. So the squish is actually more than whatever the diameter here is. So let's let's do some stock timing numbers and see where we end up. But I gotta get this silly flywheel off first. Get a screwdriver in there. easy but because I've dismantled this saw before it is that easy no damage on that that's good always blue Loctite on here when you put the thing back together and always put it back together with the torque wrench uh, 13 foot-pounds is, I believe, the spec. Somebody can feel free to correct me if I'm wrong on that. Timing numbers. So now we get a, the degree wheel here going. I'm not too exact with the degree wheel. I, I I don't think I need to be. I'm just not confident that that it absolutely has to be something that's that exact. So I know there are guys that do, and that's great. Um, I'm I'm not looking to eke that last five percent out of the saw. I'm looking to hit the high points. So I figured this out kind of on my own. I'm going to, you know, here's how you find top dead center, is you actually, you run this up until it stops. Yes, cap is messing me up. So let's, this is actually a piece of aluminum. This is from my, uh, tap and die set. But you'll see exactly why I'm using that in a minute. Let's run the gas cap. I always try to keep these in nice shape. If you're looking to buy a saw, check the gas caps. If the gas caps aren't these nice new ones, odds are the saw hasn't been gone through. I I like to see nice, fresh, new gas caps on saws. Um, I just think it's poor etiquette to not do that. Let's drain the oil. Those caps are out of the way. The degree wheel. Keep in mind this degree wheel is not exactly a professional degree wheel. Um, there are commercial ones you can buy. feel like spending a whole lot of money on it so and again I'm not one it's one of those things I'm not convinced that you really need to I mean for a 350 the, the nice ones of these are going to go for 250 bucks so it's not really like this is a an exceptionally uh, high dollar item I want to get good results from it of course but not something that I absolutely need to be primo, primo performance. Okay, so now let's take this in here as a piston stop. 
So, where are we at? Well, if you measure, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a mark. Make a mark. Boom. Right there on the top of the cylinder head. That way you can get an idea where you're at. So, that is approximately, oh, 79? No, sorry, 81. 81. So now we go back around. And see where it hits. And that is 21. So 81 here, 21. So split the difference. Tighten this up to somewhere around 55. And let's get a wrench here. Okay. Now let's go back around. That's 21. That's 55. Let's keep going to 32. Let's go back around. 45, 45, let's go to 35, so you want to make sure with this in place, which is a piston stop, you want to make sure that both sides of TDC uh, are equal. Now we're at 45, so now we're going to go to 40 here. All I'm doing is I'm, I'm tightening this piece, which is kind of sloppy fit anyway. Um, so that's 40 degrees. Let's go back around. Thirty-eight. I'm going to move this to 39. I'm going to go back around and I should basically hit my target of 39. Now, now when I bring this, I always want to rotate this so that I am basically tightening this cardboard piece. So now when I come up, well it sure looks like the piston's up top. The top dead center. There we have it. That's how I I find it, and I think for what we do, that's going to be close enough.